Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you decided to join us today. Today we have a special program for you, and we want you to stick around and see what that is, okay? Boy, is it hot outside or what? I have my water bottle right here, and I'm drinking. See how big my water bottle, water bottle is? It's big. I hope, hopefully, you guys are drinking some water too. Okay, so make sure that you drink a lot of water, plenty of water, because it's hot. If you guys go outside, make sure you, you're always with mom and dad and drinking a lot of water. You don't want to have a heat stroke or dehydrate yourself on this heat. Okay, so I have my water bottle. We're going to be playing something with an empty water bottle later in the program, and I want you guys to do that at home too, or at least try to do it at home, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay. Last week we had Johnny here. Johnny was great. I watched the video and I loved it. I loved the way he did Kids Connection. And he's going to be doing more Kids Connection in the future. Not only Johnny, but we have all other characters that are going to make their appearance in Kids Connection program. And hopefully you guys like them too. Okay? Let us know how you like Johnny. And if you want to have Kid come out and visit you. By the way, Kid was going to make some visits last week but it was so hot and we didn't want to have kid outside on the sun so we asked those families to hang tight we're gonna wait until it cools down a little bit more and we'll have kid come out and visit them and if you want to visit from kid it's a social distance everyone from the sidewalk you just email us have mom or dad email us bdkidsconnection at gmail.com we'll schedule an appointment and ha I'll drive kid to have him come out and visit you at your house and say hello from a distance, okay? Let's get our program started singing our song of the day and we'll see how this is connected to our program today. Let's sing it together.
Now I invite you to bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this hot summer day. We ask your blessings over this program. Bless each boy and girl who are watching us right now, wherever they are. Bless them, be with them, and help us get connected with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent. Do you guys, have you guys seen anybody fight, argue? Have you? Have you seen anybody hit each other? Oh no! Sometimes there are some people that are mean and they hit each other. No, 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 no. We don't do that here in Kids Connection. Here in Kids Connection, it's all about love. But in our missionary story today, we're going to hear a story about a boy. A boy who someone hit him. And you'll see what happened after that person hit him. What did he do? Let's watch our missionary story. Emmanuel wanted to annoy 13-year-old Aggie during a break between French and physics classes at the Seventh-day Adventist School in Libreville, Gabon. He knew that Aggie had a short temper, so he started saying mean things. Annoyed, Aggie immediately slapped the boy on the cheek. Emmanuel didn't like being slapped, and he slapped Aggie back. Now Aggie was furious. He punched Emmanuel. Children crowded around the fighting boys. Don't stop, they yelled. Let them fight. A teacher's assistant came running, causing the children to scatter to their seats. He pulled them apart. Why are you fighting? He was mean to me, Aggie said. He hit me, Emmanuel said. You shouldn't fight. Fighting is for animals. Apologize. As punishment, the boys had to spend two hours away from the other children, quietly thinking about what they had done. It was a long two hours. After some time, Aggie whispered to Emmanuel, Why were you mean to me? I was only joking, Emmanuel whispered back. Aggie wished that he hadn't lost his temper. That summer, Grandfather sent Aggie to a Pathfinder campout. Aggie's Bible teacher also went to the campout, and he spoke for morning and evening worship. At the end of the three-week campout, he asked whether any children wanted to give their hearts to Jesus. He told them how Jesus could change their hearts. Instead of anger, he could give them peace and love. When Aggie heard that, he remembered his short temper. He remembered how his temper led to fights and made his parents unhappy. He wanted to change and he prayed, Lord, I want to follow you. Then Aggie stood up and went to the front. People were surprised to see him standing. His Bible teacher was happy that he wanted to be baptized. After baptism, when Aggie came out of the river, he felt the same as before. He thought maybe something miraculous would have happened, but everything still seemed normal. But as the days passed, he noticed that he no longer enjoyed many things of the past. His friends noticed that he wasn't easily angered like before. Just the other day, Emmanuel brought some cakes to sell in class, and Aggie didn't want to buy one. I don't want to buy anything today, he said. I'm not feeling well. Come on, buy one, Emmanuel said. No, I can't, Aggie said. Emmanuel's face twisted in anger and he slapped Aggie. But Aggie didn't feel angry at all, and he quietly walked away. He was so grateful that with Jesus' help, his days of having a short temper were over. Jesus was changing his heart. In 2017, part of the 13th Sabbath offering helped construct a high school for 280 students in Aggie's hometown of Libreville, Gabon. Thank you for helping change lives through the 13 Sabbath offering. It makes a big difference. I am so happy that he got to know Jesus and how Jesus transformed him in his heart. And he's now a new person. Hopefully, we can learn from this story and take that as an example that whenever someone does something mean to us, how do we react to those things? Let's keep them in prayer and also continue to support with our offering as missionaries are helping people to get to know Jesus in other areas of the world. Thank you for your support. <sighs> okay, it's hot. Is it hot where you are? Why well, it's hot out here. Let me drink some water. Mmm. 
It is nice and cool. Look how big my water bottle is. And I drink all this water because I need to get and to be hydrated, okay? Now what I want you guys to do, go to the kitchen, go to your living room, um, wherever you have a water bottle, okay? I'm gonna use this one because this is the one I have with me now. Mm. This is good water. I love cold water. It's refreshing. If you guys have a clear water bottle, that's fine. If you have one of the Kids Connection water bottle that you have there from the previous, remember when we were here in Kids Connection, go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna do something fun with you guys now. So I'm gonna do something fun with you guys today, okay? So here is my desk and I'm gonna show you something and I want you guys to try this at home too. First, I want you to get an empty water bottle, okay? Completely empty this one. I just finished drinking the water, okay? Then you're gonna grab two books or two boxes or whatever you can put it on one side and the other. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these uh, two water bottles here, okay? And I'm gonna remove the cap of the water bottle, one there and the other one here. So now I have, and let's pretend that these two water bottles, okay, Kids Connection, are like books or you can put them sideways like this, but I want you guys to put them away and I want you to grab a piece of paper, okay? And put the water bottles or put the boxes or the books at a distance from those two platforms, okay? Just like this. So you have one on this side and one on this side. It could be a little bit lower too. I'm gonna use this one because it's just easier for you to see what we're, what we're doing, okay? So here I have two water bottles. They're flat on top. And you are welcome to pause the video and go get your water bottle, go get your books or go get your boxes and set up and get a sheet of paper like this one. This one is, is the one that I, we use here in Kids Connection, okay? It doesn't matter which sheet you use as long as it's one sheet of paper, okay? Now, what I want you guys to do is to put the piece of paper over the two platforms that you have. Here's one platform and here is another one, either book or boxes. Now, I want you to grab the empty water bottle that you have and try to put that water bottle on that paper bridge that you just built, okay? That you just put over. And I wanna see, I wanna see if the water bottle stands on top of the bridge. Let's see if this one stands. Oops, it did not stand. Hmm, it didn't stand, it didn't stay there. I guess it's not strong enough. Let's try it again. Piece of paper, bridge, paper, and nope, it didn't. My question to you is, are you able to make the water bottle stand on the bridge without falling? Can you do it? How can you make the water bottle empty stand on top of this paper bridge? Do you think it's possible? If you need to pause this video, pause it and try a couple times and see what can you do to make this what you cannot put another book on, on top. You just have to stand that water bottle on the piece of, of paper, on the piece of paper only, okay? How can we do this? How? Dun, dun, dun. I will show you, but pause the video, try it, and then come back and watch how it's done, okay? All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try a little bit, and now you're playing the video again. I'm gonna show you how this is possible. Are you ready? You grab the piece of paper, just like this, and you will fold, and you will make one fold that is about a half inch long, or maybe a quarter of an inch. So it folds like this, okay? And then you fold that backwards again. And then you turn it around and you fold it, just like you're building a fan, remember? 
You remember how to, how to make a fan? Okay, and then you do it again on this side. Oops, I just lost my water bottle. I'll get in a second, okay? So you fold it this way and then you fold it again, but you fold it that way and you keep turning and you keep, keep folding just like you do it. You make a, you build a fan, okay? And now I have a little, a little kids connection fan. You see that? Okay. Oh, this feels good. Yes, it feels good. Okay. Now give me one second. Let me get the water bottle. Here we go. Got it. So now I'm going to show you how you can actually make the water bottle stand between the two platforms with one piece of paper that is now folded in like an accordion. Okay. Like this. So you put that accordion there, piece of paper. It's still the piece of paper. Okay. See that? The accordion. You put that there. And now you put the water bottle on top of that piece of paper. And voila! I just made a water bottle stand on a paper bridge. Isn't it cool? Look at this. When you fold it, when you fold the paper into an accordion shape, it supported. Oops, the wind just blew it away. It supported the, the water bottle across the bridge. And, and it doesn't fall. Ha, this is amazing. It's still a piece of paper. And we were able to make that piece of that water bottle stand between the bridges on a bridge of paper. But we had to do something to that piece of paper. I couldn't have the piece of paper straight. I had to fold the piece of paper and I had to change the way the piece of paper was to make it stronger so the bridge would support the water bottle. It could have not happened without changing something to the way that the, the paper was. It could not support if it was just a piece of paper. But once you make that change, that's that gives the support and we were able to make a stand. Now you know, do something fun. Show your friends, show your grandma, your grandpa. Ask them if they know how to do it and then you show them how to do it. So now I'm gonna take this away and I'll tell you what this has to do with our, with our program for today. So in today's story, at our lesson and with our teacher, we are going to learn about a people, the Thessalonians, and what they were facing, the struggle and the difficulties they were facing. Just like when we had the piece of paper and we were trying to make the water bottle stand in the middle of that piece of paper. And what, how hard was it? They were facing some difficult times and they didn't know how to do something. They didn't know how to walk. They didn't know how to keep going. But we're also going to learn how a letter that was sent to them helped them to see and how they were able to continue to walk as, as that was the instructions on how a God that was a loving God was able to help them. Not only that, but we will also hear about this God and how this God can actually help us today in our difficult times. Sometimes when we see a problem that is too hard and we don't know how to do it, like a piece of paper, we didn't know how to build that bridge and to, we didn't know how to make the, the, the water bottle stand on that piece of paper. We had to do something to the paper to make it stand. The same way God can help us when we don't know, God can help us and change the way we're doing things and by His love, He can help us. And 
those, the story that we're here, we're here today can, we're here, can even help us uh, on, now, on our days today, as long as we keep listening to the voice of God. Now I invite you to stand up, get ready, let's sing our song of the day together to close our Kids Connection program. All right, that was a fun song. I always enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection, and hopefully you guys enjoy singing them at home too with mom and dad. Tell your friends about Kids Connection and invite them to come and watch. Now let's bow our heads so we can close our Kids Connection program. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are our God. Thank you because of the Bible stories that we hear. And today's story, I ask that you help the kids see how you love us and how you can help us and we can count on you. And sometimes there are some changes in life and life is difficult, but we know that you can help us pull it through. We ask that you keep protecting all the boys and girls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Now, let me tell you a couple of things that are happening. Well, number one. Thank you guys for being a part of our program last week. Remember, we were in a church in a Zoom meeting and a Zoom worship where we saw all the pastors and we saw Johnny. Some of you had a chance to join that Zoom worship and be a part with Johnny and even talk to Johnny, asking some questions and answering some questions. We are going to have another worship live on Zoom coming up 
next month. And this is going to be a regular thing for our church. So get ready. We'll let you know when that comes so you guys can join us on Zoom and either see Johnny or maybe see Julia or see, or see myself or see someone else participating and being a part of that program as well. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to send us an email. Let us know if it's your birthday. We have school coming up starting this week. Some of you already started homeschool last week. I saw pictures. Well, I hope that this year is a year full of success on your school and you get all your homework and you get all your schoolwork accomplishments and you do them all. And if you guys are doing the on, uh, at home, in-home uh, online school, Starting this week, I pray that God protects you, God be with you, and as you grow and as you learn, may this be an experience that you'll never forget. I pray for your safety, and I will see you guys next week on another Kids Connection program. Stick around for your Kids Connection, excuse me, for your Sabbath school class, classroom story, which is come, comes up by your teacher. Thank you for being a part and for joining us today. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Have a great afternoon. Stay cool, hydrated, drink a lot of water. And don't forget to play the game of the water bottle and the bridge with your mom and dad or someone else. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I would like to sing our good morning song. Are you ready to sing it with me? This is the way it goes. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. How are you today? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. This happy Sabbath day. Well, I hope you all had a good week. I would like to welcome a few of you today. I would like to welcome Ethan and Ellis, Sky and Paul, Sunny, Rio and Gia, Amy and Camden, Reese, happy birthday this month, Sammy and Carlina, Tayel, Aiden, Vida and Max, Caitlin, Ariane, Vashti and Moses, Estella, Jax, Janie and Jade, Josiah, happy birthday Josiah, Nicholas, Federico and Francisco, Will and Mia, Andrea, Joshua, Joy and Jael, Luke and John, Cody, Benjamin, Aaliyah, Ethan, JR and Seth, Zori and her new baby. I hope you're having a good week so far. Happy Sabbath to you. Let's go ahead and do our lesson story. Well, how many of you have heard of an obstacle course before? Sometimes obstacles can be hard or easy. Some people do obstacle courses for fun. They may go under a pole or climb over something or walk around something. They may wade through mud or water. Those are obstacles. And sometimes in our lives, we can have obstacles too. The people in Thessalonica had obstacles. They were being mistreated. Sometimes they were having their belongings taken away from them. They were being thrown in jail. They were even in danger of being hurt or even killed. Paul understood what the believers were going through because he had been treated badly too. He had been beaten up with the sticks. He had rocks thrown at him. He had been in jail. He had been in shipwrecks. All kinds of bad things had happened to him. Those are called obstacles. How could the people still keep on loving Jesus when they were going through all those dangerous things? Don't you think that would have been really hard? I think it would have been. They would certainly have to help each other to stay strong. Paul wrote a letter to them, encouraging them to turn to God, and we call this letter 2 Thessalonians. Paul reminded the church of some of the great things that God would help them to do and to help them to stay strong. 
Now, one of the first things that Paul reminded them of was that God sees them. God sees that they're being mistreated. Does God see us when we're hurt? Yes, he does. And the Bible tells us that he doesn't like it when we're being hurt. Sometimes there are people who do hurtful things and they have that choice. And we've talked about making good choices. Sometimes when people make bad choices, they have to follow the consequences of those choices. They may choose to hurt others. God will be there and he sees that you're being hurt and he cares. The people that may get hurt sometimes suffer, but God is still there to take care of them. The second one is God cares. God cares about us. And that means that when people make the bad choices, that he cares about them still. The people in Thessalonica knew that God loved them and cared about what was happening to them. They knew that Jesus understood exactly what they were going through. Jesus had gone through many bad things too. When we go through hard times, it does not mean that God doesn't care about us. God cares and it hurts him also to see us hurting. He is still with us during those hard times. He can turn those painful moments into something good in our lives. The third thing that I want to remind you of is that God comforts you. There were false teachers in Thessalonica who, who were lying to the believers about Jesus. They were saying that Jesus had already come back for the believers and that the people in Thessalonica had missed their chance to go to heaven. Some of the Christians believed it and they were very afraid that they had missed Jesus. Paul reminded them of the truth. Jesus will return at just the right time and take his followers to live with him in heaven. Until then, what could Paul say that would comfort them? Now here is a verse that Paul gave them to comfort them. It comes from 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 16 and 17. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. In other words, God would be there as their comfort and encourager. He would take care of them. God sees, God cares, and God comforts. How many of you play a game called softball? How many of you have ever heard of baseball before? This is a baseball. Have you ever played baseball or played t-ball? When you start playing your sport, you don't really know the rules, but the first thing that you learn are the rules. For instance, if you try to play baseball and you run from home to third base, that's not one of the rules. You should run from home plate to first base, then second, third, and back to home. That's one of the rules of the sport. But knowing the rules about baseball is not enough. If you never practice the game after that, will you get good at the game? You have to practice if you want to get good at it. Running towards first instead of third does not make you good at it. In today's lesson, we learned about who God is, but knowing the facts about God and knowing God are not the same thing. We have to practice trusting God if we want to know him better just like we practice our sports so that we know how to play it better. Well, everyone experiences tough times in, in their lives, but we can rely on God's truth. God says in his word that he will take care of us and help us when we have tough times. What are some of the times that have felt hard for us? Sometimes when you're at school, somebody may pick on you. Sometimes when you're at lunch, somebody might take some of your food. Sometimes at home, mommy and daddy, you think that they aren't being fair or your friends make fun of you. 
Sometimes it's tough. We have some tough things that happen to us, even as children. Paul encouraged the believers in Thessalonica to rely on the hope that they had in Jesus. This week we learned how to keep walking or living for God, even when we have hard times. We can learn from Paul's letter to stay strong in our faith. Well, let's talk about our memory verse. God has promised us that he will always be with us. We belong to God and God is always with us. No matter what happens, God will help us. Knowing we belong to God can help us to live for him. It can help us to say and do and think things that are right. We do not do this alone. Remember, we have the Holy Spirit and God with us. All right, let's try our memory verse. Are you ready? Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. That comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Let's try it again. Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. Well, let's try it one more time. Are you ready? Live good lives for God. It is God who calls you to his glorious kingdom. That comes from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Now, we've been saying that for quite a few weeks now, so see if you can say it by yourself to your mommy and daddy and see how well you do. Well, in our lesson, we've learned three important facts about God, and they are God sees, God cares, and God comforts us. Now, what should your response be? Well, you can say, I know God sees me, and I know that I can trust him. I can continue to trust him, based on the fact that God sees everything. Because I know that God cares for me, I never doubt his love. Nothing can separate me from God's love because it is not based on what I say or do. It is based on his love for me and that he never changes. He will always love me. Because God comforts me, I can remember that I am never alone. God comforts us through God's word and through the Holy Spirit. As followers of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Therefore, we are never alone. Knowing that I am never alone can be comforting to me. In our Christian life, in our day-to-day -day life with family or with the friends, the facts about God do not change. Walking and living with God will keep us from trouble and will comfort us when we are down. I would like you to pray with me. Let's go ahead and talk to God. Dear Jesus, help us always to remember that you see us, that you care for us, and that you comfort us. Amen. Now, I have a craft for you today. And it is a pair of shoes. These shoes are walking and living for God. And on the shoes it says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow tired. You can find this pattern on the website, and parents, it's best if you print it out on cardstock, but you can use regular paper also. I hope you have fun this week with your shoes. You can hang them up and use them as a mobile. 
hang them on the wall, put them on the refrigerator. I hope you had fun today. Goodbye.